At Capella University, you'll get support from people who care about your success. From before you enroll to after you graduate, pursue your goals knowing help is available when you need it. Imagine your future differently at capella.edu. You're listening to a Mint podcast brought to you by HD Smartcast. Good morning listeners, welcome to Top of the Morning by Mint. Your weekday newscast that brings you five major stories from the world of business. It's Wednesday, April 17th, 2024. My name is Nelson John. Let's get started. Top of the morning by Mint. Indian benchmark indices fell for the third consecutive session on Tuesday. influenced by negative cues from global markets which are currently under pressure due to geopolitical tensions in the Middle East the sensex closed down 0.62% while the nifty ended the session 0.56% lower shakti kanta das the reserve bank of india india's highest monetary authority has recently flagged concerns about unauthorized forex trading platforms urging banks to keep a sharp eye on them this has sparked a broader discussion about the need for tighter regulations in india's forex market these platforms are where most foreign exchange transactions happen they are primarily used by businesses like importers and exporters to manage their currency risks these trades usually happen on over the counter platforms authorized by the rbi or through recognized exchange traded segments of bourses So what exactly is going on with forex trading platforms and what has the RBI done about it Mint's banking editor Gopika Gopakumar tackles those questions in today's primer Smartphone companies in India finally have some good news The scramble for smartphones in the country triggered by the COVID-19 lockdowns ebb back as the world returned to normal However, the March quarter has ignited some hope in the heart of smartphone manufacturers. This past March quarter, smartphone shipments rose by 5% year over year to somewhere between 32.5 to 35 million units, according to data from four industry analysts. It's a refreshing change, especially considering that back in the March quarter of 2021, shipments had peaked at 38 million units. Since then there's been a bit of a slump. Men's technology correspondent Shovik Das reports on this turnaround which is especially crucial for big players like Samsung, Xiaomi and Vivo, who together make about 38.8 billion dollars in sales in India last year. However, despite these positive gains, industry veterans are advising caution. The broader economic pressures still loom large, affecting consumer confidence. The market has also seen a shift towards refurbished and second-hand smartphones thanks to the growth of organized retailers in the space. India is gearing up for the third phase of its airport privatization plan. More airports are expected to see private stakeholders after the upcoming election. Officials close to the matter told Mint's aviation correspondent Anu Sharma of Airport Authorities of India's plans to sell off its remaining 13% stake in Bangalore International Airport Limited. But that's not all. They're also planning to throw the doors open for private bids to manage, operate and develop 13 other airports including popular ones like Bhubaneswar, Tirchi, Indore, Raipur, Amritsar and Varanasi. There's also talks of selling stakes in Hyderabad Airport. The authorities are planning to bundle six profitable airports with even smaller, not so profitable ones like Kushinagar, Kaya, Hubli, Aurangabad, Jabalpur, Tirupati, and Kangra. This mix and match might just make the deal more attractive to potential investors. This push towards privatizing is part of a bigger picture. India's national monetization plan, which was rolled out back in 2021. The plan is ambitious, aiming to privatize around 25 airports and offload airport authority shares in big metros like Delhi, Mumbai, Hyderabad and Bangalore. The government is hoping to unlock 21,000 crore rupees from these sales between 2022 and 2025. Mid-budget movies, which really felt the pinch through COVID, are suddenly back in the spotlight. 
Judging by the impressive box office numbers of films like Crew, Shaitan and Article 370, it looks like affordable ticket prices and clever marketing are paying off. Let's talk numbers. The movie Crew, featuring stars like Tabu, Karina Kapoor Khan and Kriti Sanon earned 77 crore rupees since its release at the end of March. Ajay Devgan's horror thriller, Shaitan, pulled in a cool 148 crore rupees from early March. And the political drama, Article 370, isn't far behind with 82 crore rupees since late February. And these films have all been profitable. Even though the Hindi box office saw a 25% dip year-on-year in the last quarter of FY24, small and medium-budget films are making a stronger showing than they have since the pandemic began. They're now accounting for 30 to 35% of box office receipts, up from just 12 to 15% previously. Mint's media and entertainment correspondent Lata Jha reports on the resurgence of mid-budget Bollywood movies and the changing landscape of Indian cinema. As tensions in West Asia heat up, there's a real concern that crude oil prices might just hit the roof possibly soaring over $100 per barrel if things continue to escalate. This is a big deal not just globally, but especially for India's oil marketing companies. Because hiking fuel prices during an election season is not a popular move. Now, high crude prices are already an issue for state-owned oil marketing companies because it squeezes the marketing margins, which is the difference between what it costs to make petrol or diesel and what they sell it for. Right now, those margins are pretty thin, about 5 rupees per litre for petrol and barely a rupee for diesel. If crude prices shoot up, these margins could even get tighter. Mint's energy correspondent Rituraj Parwa spoke to industry insiders and analysts to break down the ongoing problem for Indian oil marketing companies. We'd love to hear your feedback on this podcast. Let us know by writing to us at feedback at the rate You may send us feedback, tips, or anything that you feel we should be covering from your vantage point in the world of business and finance. That's all for today. Thank you for listening. We'll be back tomorrow with a fresh episode of Top of the Morning. Have a nice day ahead. Top of the Morning by Mint. Sometimes it takes a different approach to help you unlock your true potential. With Capella University's game-changing FlexPath learning format, you gain relevant skills you can apply to your career right away. Earn your degree from an accredited university and be confident in the quality of your education. Imagine your future differently at capella.edu. Capella University is accredited by the Higher Learning Commission. Learn more at capella.edu slash accreditation.